So the switch is inside. Uh, there it is over there. Let's see if I can get that in focus. Uh, turning it to the right will obviously turn it on. Uh, a little bit hard to reach, a uh, bit out of the way, uh, but you know I think I'll be turning that you know turn that on for once on the, in the session, uh, and then turning it off later again. So it shouldn't be a problem. Let's see. Oh, wow. That is so quiet. So that's really weird. Um, I don't understand why the safety valve is popping open and sputtering out here. That's actually really loud. Uh, louder than the Sparmax uh, in terms of when it was on. So I hope there's nothing wrong here. Um, and again, as you can see, it hasn't hit anywhere near to 120 PSI. Um, so I'm going to look into that a little bit more. I'm a little concerned with the uh, noise that you hear, or that burst of air, as soon as the tank turns off. And I thought initially it was the, uh, the safety valve over here, because the tank was hitting too high a pressure. So it turns out that's not the case. Rather, if you look just behind that little grey section there, there's a little nozzle. And that is something along the lines of an overpressure valve, um, and what that, or a pressure release valve. And this actually emits air every time you turn the tank off, or every time the tank turns itself off. And this is just a mechanism to lower the pressure slightly uh, for the next time that the uh, pump has to turn itself on. I uh, didn't quite understand something about it having to overcome uh, any initial pressure. And it's got, I can't, you can't really see it there, um, it's got a little ridge along the inside. So if I'm just feeling over there, they're like two little slots or... Um, so you can actually fit a pipe over that and push that into a, a bottle or something like that to dampen the noise, so a silencer. Um, kind of effect. So I'm going to give that a try. Um, if I'm lucky, I'll actually be able to use uh, the PVC pipe that came with the oil bottle. Here's my makeshift silencer. Uh, fortunately the tube that came with the oil is the exact diameter I need to uh, plug into the uh, escape valve over there. And then I fitted that into a dropper bottle. Uh, sliced off the nib and squeezed it in nice and tight, filled it with cotton wool and I've got a five millimeter hole here. You obviously don't want the hole too small otherwise you'll end up with a even louder whistle. And uh, I've just used some five minute epoxy on the front there to uh, lock in the, the tube. Quite a lot of pressure uh, builds up in there and I've actually had the thing flying off before. So I've sealed it in with some five minute epoxy and I've done it a few tests. It is a lot quieter doing it like this. Um, so I'll give you a demonstration once the uh, glue cures. Okay, so it's approaching 90 psi, so we should hear it soon. So it still gives a bit of a bang, but at least it's not that high pitched sound. So my overall feeling is that I'm a little bit disappointed, or actually quite disappointed. The whole purpose of buying the oil-based compressor was to eliminate the loud sound of the piston compressor. Um, it is, it's got a 4 litre tank, so I guess it does take quite a long time to fill up. Uh, so I won't be hearing that ejection of air too frequently. Uh, but still, it will probably give me a fright. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away with working in with the airbrush in the evenings, uh, which was the whole motivation of buying this compressor. So anyway, there you have it. Um, very silent to fill up. Uh, nice 4 litre tank, so we'll see how long it takes to drop from the 90 psi to the, well let's see, that goes from 90 to 60 or something to that effect. So we'll see how long it takes to, well how many minutes of airbrushing I'll actually get out before it has to refill itself. Okay, thank you for watching, quite a long video. Hope you found it useful and um, yeah, please stay tuned for some other videos to see what I'll be doing with this guy.